welcome back. In this video, we are gonna talk about how to add a background image to one of your worksheets and to a dashboard. I've got three different ways on how to do it. We're gonna add a simple image, then we're just gonna overlay a, dash, a worksheet on a dashboard behind it in front of an image, and after that, I'm gonna show you how to do dynamic images Let's jump in. I already have, I'm gonna have a visualization created. Here it is. It's a scatter plot. It shows profit ratio and discount. And then we're plotting product names and you'll see the more discount we have, the lower profit we're gonna, gonna make in this case. And what I wanna do is actually just wanna add a product image, uh, just an image in the background. It actually isn't gonna have anything to do with the, the data itself other than um, I could want to potentially put an icon of my business behind this. And how do I do that? Well, it's really easy. Uh, we're gonna go up to map and then we're gonna go to background images and we're gonna select our data set. In this case, it's the sample-superstore data set. And then all we gotta do is add an image. And you can have multiple images per data set. So for this one, I'm just gonna call this logo. And I'm gonna go find my company logo. I'm gonna go find the data coach logo. And uh, there it is, perfect. And now that I have it in, I just need to specify the latitude and longitude of those points on two different axes. Tableau by default says, okay, you've brought in profit ratio, you've brought in discount on your view, uh, why don't we, attempt to use those as our axes. And then from there, we just have to specify where we want the, lo the logo to start and end, or the image to start and end. In this case, I'm gonna say, uh, let's do left is 10% and right is 80%. So the left hand side will be roughly this 10% and the right hand side will be roughly 80%. I'm just gonna do some math. That's about 0.7 in terms of percentages. I'm gonna try to make things square-ish. Um, and you'll notice my axis is a little bit longer here on profit ratio. So I'm gonna do about three times that amount. So 2.1 in, in value. And I'm gonna just choose um, for my top, I know right away it's 0.4. And then just kind of working backwards, I think that's like negative 1.7. And I'm just gonna hit tab a couple times and hit apply. And you'll see um, that my image has shown up now on the background of my visualization. And what Tableau did by default is it sort of kept the proportions exactly um, in line with how the image actually has come, come in. And if we just, I'm gonna hit okay so that you can see, like uh, my image technically doesn't start at 0.1 or end at 0.8, and it definitely does, it goes to about 1.7, definitely not quite to, to 0.4, but it generally fits. So Tableau, what it did is it fit the image within the bounds that I suggested uh, kind of resizing the image more or less to, to match with what we what, what I had selected. Now I could go in and I could edit that background image and we could take a look at why Tableau did that. If I just hit edit on that logo and I go to options, you'll see that Tableau by default locks the aspect ratio. We could also say always show the entire image. That would change the axes if it went beyond one of our axes to show the entire image. And if I uncheck uh, lock aspect ratio, you'll see that my image is now sort of shifted sizes and the format of my dashboard or my worksheet in general has changed too. But I'm gonna keep the aspect ratio as is and I'm just gonna hit apply and you'll see it sort of rechanges the axes. If we go back in here, um, you could also wash out your image and sort of make it more like a watermark, more than something that stands out within your visualization. And sometimes you won't get your measurements right on where you're gonna put your axes here. Sometimes it's too far to the left, sometimes it's too far to the right, and you have to just do tiny adjustments. So let's pretend that my image, I really wanted it further over to the left, I wanted zero. You'll notice when I hit apply that it does not move and change that value and apply right away. We need to make sure that our cursor is out of the value that we change and then hit apply. And when we do that, it'll change the value. So you notice I change it to zero and then I tab to the right. Uh, once I was off this value, I could hit apply and actually change the value 
Again, if I hit one here, you'll notice it won't change, but as soon as I tab off of that value or change to a different value, it'll move over. And now you'll notice that uh, Tableau has cut off and truncate, truncated my image. So again, if I wanted to just show that entire image, I would just hit, uh, go to options and then select always show image. And if I hit apply, it brings back my entire image again. And the, the image that I've brought in here, it is a transparent background. So what is important to do and understand is that Tableau will retain that transparency in this visualization as long as I don't wash the value out. So if I just right click and I format, and let's just change the worksheet color here to something just a little bit darker. Actually, let's make it really dark, let's make it black. You'll see it retains the transparency. However, if I were to go format that map, uh, background map again, background image, and I would just add a little bit of washout to it and then hit apply, you'll notice that the washout actually starts to show up on the visualization. So you can't really wash out an image unless you plan on keeping the background white. And that'll be really important going forward. Um, and that's just really gonna mean that you're gonna have to edit your image ahead of time to the sort of washout level that you'd want. But more or less, it's a really nice way to just add a background logo, add sort of this watermark to a visualization. Some companies really like this setup. Now there's another way you can do this. And in the past, you really had to only do it this one way because you there were no transparent worksheets. Now there are transparent worksheets. So we can sort of do this same thing. I have a dashboard already created for my, or sorry, a worksheet already created for this next example. It's the exact same thing that we just looked at. You'll see profit ratio. Uh, I've just changed the access name to copy number two and discount just so you can see this version. And what I'm gonna do is build a dashboard. I'm just gonna set the height here to like 800 and I'm gonna bring in this value. And when I bring it in, um, you'll notice right away, nothing changed from before. I'm actually just gonna make it floating and we'll bring something in later. But this time I'm gonna also bring in that image. And when I bring in the image, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna choose my logo from earlier and I'm gonna hit okay. Now I have brought in this logo and I just wanna have this sit behind my, uh, my worksheet. And I'm just gonna make sure my order is correct. So my image is currently on top of my, dash, uh, of my worksheet on my dashboard. So let's just go and we're gonna change the floating order and we're gonna bring that worksheet to the front. Oh no, it sort of, we can't see it. Well, we can make this worksheet transparent. We just need to format it, right click and format. And we'll just change the shading here to be none. And then we would be able to sort of, you know, we would, be able to move this dashboard, um, this worksheet into place and change that image size and sort of play around with it. So maybe this, this is ultimately gonna go in the corner of my dashboard and then this image is gonna end up somewhere down here. Um, and that's the, the other way that you could do this. The pros about this is that, um, you know, it's really simple. It's gonna be a lot easier to adjust the image size because all you need to do is go in and um, go to your layout and select that image and then just sort of change the size as needed. The cons are you're gonna always have to have floating and not everybody likes to use floating, but it, may, it does make it a lot easier in this case to format an image behind a dashboard and add that background image. So that's why, you know, more or less, you're gonna end up using the first method if you don't like floating and you want to sort of just tile things into place. But the, like I guess I'm gonna say, the pros here is that you do have a lot easier ability to sort of manipulate the values into place, uh, that image into place. And also I would say is that you'd be able to edit this image and you could set and change that image a lot faster than if you had say, that image, that background image before. So if I just want to edit this image, right? I'll just come in here and edit the image. 
and I could choose another value. Like if I wanted to put like this copy machine behind it, a high def copy machine, uh, I could just place that behind it super easy because some of my sales here are copy machines. That's why I picked it. Um, it looks and it's quick to change. If I could, again, I just have more drop downs to change the image. I could still do it with the first way, just a little more difficult. My last way is actually just kind of going back to the original way. Um, what I want to do for this version, for my third version, is I'm going to start with that Data Coach logo. And I actually want, in this case, to have a different logo for different data that I have in my dashboard. Sometimes um, I'm going to want to see different images. And in, uh, to be specific, first of all, let me remove this hierarchy. Uh, specifically, let's take a look at category. What I want to do is say, for furniture, I always want to show a furniture logo for office supplies, I always want to show office supplies logo. And for technology, I always want to show that copy machine uh, that I had earlier. So I want for each category in this data to have separate images. That's going to be a little more difficult and to make dynamic with option number one. But with option number two, we just have some subtle changes that we need to make. So let's dive in and make those. I'm just going to go up and now I'm going to say, uh, actually, I'm going to change my axis. I made a copy, a second copy of profit ratio so that I can reset my images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to map and that background images. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to go, let's add an image and I'm going to first say furniture. So I saved a workplace, this image of a desk uh, and a computer. And I'm going to say I want discount and profit ratio. Tableau is really nice. Brought that in for me. I'm going to again from before, I'm going to say 0.2 on the left, 0.8 on the right. And then trying to keep those proportions relative to the profit ratio as early, uh, that we had earlier. The bottom is going to be negative 1.7 and 0.4. And remember, I'm going to tab first and then hit apply. You'll notice that that image shows up across all three categories. However, if we go to options and then down in this show only when section, if I hit add and I select category and hit OK, I could just say when furniture is selected, let's show just that furniture image and I can hit OK. And now you'll see that image showing up just in the furniture category. Let's add another one to show you how we did that again. I just clicked add image. I went and selected my image. In this case, this time I'm going to pick paperclip for office supplies. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to set my values. Again, I'm going to set my left value on discount and my profit ratio on my axis top and bottom 0 0.2, 0 0.8, negative 1.7 and 0.4. And then again, tabbing off that value. And you'll notice my name came in as paperclip for the image. And then I'm just going to hit apply. And now we've got two images showing on furniture and then the paper clip showing on office supplies and technology. Again, just going to options, clicking add from category, selecting office supplies, OK, and OK again. One last time. There you have it. Three separate images for three different categories. What happens when we pull category off our view? Well, Tableau is really nice. It actually just says, you know what? It's not that specific category, so we don't get to show that image. So I'm just going to control Z and bring those back together. And then when I have my dashboard here and bring it out on my view, it will automatically have brought in those images as well. And that's what I really like about background images that makes it a lot easier than just say adding in an image is that you can set multiple images for the same data just by changing the dimension that you want to view. And that's the cool part. That said, um, we don't have any more tips for this lesson. We showed you how to add background images three ways, really two ways. But the first way was sort of uh, goes a little deeper in the third example. 
So the third, first way we just went to uh, maps, background images, and edited via our data set that we selected and adding an image from there. We were able to select a, select a value and set the access values. And then once we had that, our image showed up. In the second way, we didn't add a background image. In fact, all we did was make the background transparent on our dashboard and then added an image behind it. This uh, made for really easy manipulation a really simple way to format and add it a single image to a dashboard if you're okay with a floating dashboard. And then in the last example, we went deeper with adding background images by adding three different images, the three different categories. Hope you enjoyed this how to tutorial on Tableau. Also be sure to subscribe to keep up with the other Tableau videos and Alteryx videos that are coming so soon to this channel. Uh, if you want to hear, know more, you can go to datacoach.com, tessellationtech.io. Those links are down below. Vitally, if you want to see a Tableau tutorial, let us know. Hit us up on Twitter at Ask Tessellation. Thank you. Have a great day.